So we celebrate the July 4th weekend today. What are we celebrating? Well, we live in the most powerful, affluent, and privileged country in history. And there's never been a country that has the, the weapons and the power that we wield today. There's never been a country that's been so affluent, so rich, so wealthy, so well off. And there's never been a more privileged country where there's so much freedom of expression and so many different ways to express it. So we live in a powerful, affluent, and privileged country, uh, in a historically powerful, affluent, and privileged country. So, living in such a country as this, what, uh, how do we spend our time? How do we, how, what consumes our thoughts? So if we live in such an amazing country, how do we spend our time? There was recently a Nielsen report which covered the quarter, so this is the first quarter of 2016. How much time do you think Americans spend in front of a screen every day? Now, this is, we'll, we'll, we'll define this. This is gonna be tablets, smartphones, personal computers, multimedia devices, video games, radios, DVDs, DVRs, and TVs. Okay, that's a, that's a big list right there. <laughs> just about, just about, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's take a little poll. How much time do Americans spend in front of the screen every day? Who thinks it's more than a minute? <laughs> okay, okay if, if your hand's not up, I know you're sleeping already, which is not fair. Uh, but so let's, let's say, who thinks it's more than 20 hours? Wow, <laughs> okay, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it's not more than 20 hours, thankfully. And this is per day. Um, Let's go more than, okay, let's go more than five hours. More than five hours. Okay, most people. More than 10 hours. Okay, all right, so may, maybe about a half of you. The official amount is 10 hours and 39 minutes a day is the average amount of time, according to this Nielsen study, that so far in 2016, Americans are spending in front of the screen. To put things in perspective, this is mind blowing. We went up an hour a day from a year ago. So, so such is the prevalence of smartphones that we're in a rapidly, I, I don't think it can get any worse. I, I can't imagine next year coming back and saying, okay, we spend 11 hours in front of the TV every day or 11 hours in front of a screen. And this is just crazy. Okay, let's think about this. What does this look like? Okay, we skipped. Oh, there we go. Aha. This is this, okay? This is us with the remote sitting in front of a screen. Like, think about it. Like, if, if, if our founding fathers would have, would have seen someone sitting in front of a piece of plastic, which didn't, didn't exist back then, but saw someone sitting in front of a screen for 10 hours a day, you'd think that person is crazy. It's crazy. This is us. We're just, we're sitting in front of a small square sitting right there in our chair or couch or whatever comfortable thing that we're in, in front of a small screen. Like, how can you get a perspective on the world when we spend so much time in front of that? And this is the average, right? I'd hate to see the outliers, <laughs> right? So uh, there's some people that don't have a lot of this stuff. They live outside. They're, they're, they're almost tech-free. So that means that some people out here are just crazy in front of screens, like me. <laughs> Thanks to my wife for pointing that out. Uh, but how about you? How much time do you spend in front of a screen every day? Um, how much time do we spend just sitting there watching a piece of plastic, a piece of, of technology? Uh, beyond that, what, is it, what, is, what does that do to our thought process? When we're doing that, where are our thoughts taking us? Where are our thoughts taking us? Um, where's our focus? This morning, I want to look at Psalm 19. And as I consider America... I think one of, the most, one of the greatest things about America is the part God made, <laughs> is, is the from sea to shining sea in America the beautiful, and, and considering all the things that he has done, and hoping that maybe we can take a few steps back and take a broader perspective of the world than so many of us, like me, um, like the other Americans who are spending so much time in front of a screen consuming media. Let's take a few steps back this morning to think about the world we live in, to look at Psalm 19 and maybe think about ways that we might want to uh, refocus a little bit. Let's, let's pray for that. Father, we, we confess that 
our lives are busy. Um, we spend too much time consuming media and not enough time consuming your word. It is so easy to get caught up in, in all the, the great flashy things that are happening in this culture. But Lord, I pray that we don't neglect you. I pray that you would get our attention, that you'd get a hold of us, that we'd wake up and see the beauty all around us and we would embrace the joy that's only found in you. So Lord, I pray that you would speak this morning, that you'd do a miracle in our hearts and that we'd leave here changed. Uh, not, not feeling guilty, uh, maybe convicted. Um, that we leave here being most of all encouraged uh, by you, by who you are, and the life mission you've given each one of us. And so pray that you would speak loudly this morning through your word, and we have a lot of fun doing it. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So on your outline, there are three points. Uh, the first is just to stop. And the first point is just stop. <laughs> Uh, so you, as you think of the screen time and all that, let's just let's stop. Let's let's take a moment. Let's 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 put things on break a little bit. That comes from Psalm 19, one through four. Psalm Psalm 19, one through four says this: The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky displays His handiwork. Day after day, it speaks out. Night after night, it reveals His greatness. There is no actual speech or word, nor is its voice literally heard. Yet its voice echoes throughout the earth. Its words carry to the distant horizon. So as we would read through Psalm 19, 1 through 4, it's a familiar passage. I want to take a few moments just to stop and consider what these words mean. I'm going to try something a little bit new, at least for me this morning, and, and want a little interaction during the sermon. So I'm going to show a series of pictures, and these are pictures of God's creation. And maybe pretend you, pretend you haven't seen pictures like these before, pretend that you are uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes or a, a scientist or you're, you're, you're wanting to solve a mystery what is God like? What, is, what do these pictures of creation say about the creator? And so if you could just maybe give a one word answer and we'll just try it and see how it goes. If I need to moderate I will but we'll, we'll just give it a shot. Um, and just to forewarn you a lot of these pictures are from Glacier National Park because I went there a few years ago and it's gorgeous. Okay, let's start off with this picture. What does this picture tell us about God? Infinite? What else? You said something, Jackie. West Texas. West Texas, yeah, yeah. Uh, for places where you can actually see the stars, not, not uh, diminished by the smog. So infinite and kind of on a clear night, beautiful. Uh, what else? Order. Order? Okay, uh, they're all out there, all operating in a manner that uh, things are in order. You know how far away those stars are? Unreachable. Yeah, unreachable. Uh, you can hop in a, in a spaceship and take billions of years to get to them. Just think about that. That's, an, that's just mind-blowing. Infinite, huge, orderly. Okay, that's, we're off to a good start. How about this? This is, a, this is a picture from the Continental Divide. It's along a mountain ridge along Glacier National Park. And if you go to the east side, that water flows to the Atlantic. If you go on the west side, that water goes to, flows to the Pacific. Uh, what are your words on this? Unbelievable, Unbelievable right? Unfathomable. Magnificent. Magnificent, great word. Stunning. Majestic. Stunning, majestic. <laughs> What'd you say, Byron? Gobsmacked. Gobsmacked, yeah. It's awe inspiring. And and one of the frustrating things about these pictures is that having been here, it's like no word can really can really explain it. But when you stand on the crest of the mountain and you look to the east and you look to the west, just gorgeous. It's magnificent. Gobsmacked. Yes, that's a great word. Here's another picture. 
serene. That's a great picture. Serene, peaceful. Yes. Uh, I've never seen such blues in my life. I didn't think such blues existed as these lakes uh, that, that are formed by the glaciers, the melting glaciers. But it's just almost a, just a perfect reflection of the sky and the blue and the white. and It's, it's gorgeous. How about this? Beautiful? Happy. What? What? Happy. happy. Okay. Colorful. Colorful. Allergies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Ray. Sneezing. Yeah. Sneezing. Yeah. 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 You think about wild. New yeah. Beginnings. New beginnings. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Good. The good. Workmanship. Crash workmanship. Crash and ship. Mm-hmm. Thankful that he gave us the sensibilities to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now look at this. I see the intricacy, the beauty, the beauty. We start off looking at space, and now we've gone all the way to look at the flowers. Uh, who in here likes flowers? Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people. You're not going to like the next picture. <laughs> Ray, you're going to like this. He's eating your allergies. How about this? Cute. <laughs> I, I love this. I'm not sure if he's posing or if he's trying not to get caught. <laughs> Stuffing the flower, the little daisy, in his mouth. Simple life. Simple life, yeah. Orange. Salad. Salad. Lunch. <laughs> lunch. Uh, the, the groundhog or the, chipmunk. <laughs> the, chi the, the chipmunk or the grass is lunch. That's a shock mail chipmunk. What, Jackie? That's a shock mail Yeah. Did you take it? No, my dad took it. Yeah, and, and I look at this, and you could see provider. Let's see provider. See the way that, that God causes all creation to operate in an orderly manner. It's already been mentioned. And here he's providing a little snack for the critter. Uh, so maybe you're a mountain person. Maybe this is more up your alley. This is a, a picture outside of Venice, Florida, where Camille and I lived for a year. And it was amazing to just sit on a beach and watch the sunset. And on days when the beach was crowded, they would applaud after the sunset when it went down beyond the ocean. Just, you know, it's largely because they're all tourists. <laughs> but but they, they don't get to see that every day. And now we don't get to see that every day. We've got to go on vacation to see it. But what a beautiful picture. Now, the art of the skies, what does this say about the Creator? A sun so many millions of miles away. Gary. It reminds me of the time when people would go to a certain place in our neighborhood where you could see the western sky and see the sunset. Yeah. They didn't have television then. Yeah. That's before all the pollution. Yeah. Yeah. So we've looked at a few pictures here. What do these pictures tell us about the Creator? Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He does. He does. When you, when you see Psalm 19, 1 through 4, creation is eternally proclaiming God's glory from eternity past to eternity future. So these, these beautiful pictures that are so brilliant. Um, that we, that we look at and we just go, wow, that's breathtaking. That's not even a fraction of how glorious our God is. The distance from, from here to into space is not even a fraction of how big God is. Uh, how, how, how much He cares for us, not even a fraction um, of, of His great love for us. Now, let's, let's walk through a few of these things. I guess God's getting me back for the screen time. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here's some things. God's immense. I'll just read them. God's intricate. God's artistic. God is creative. God is beautiful. God is eternal. God is sovereign. 
God is provider. God is inexplicable or unfathomable. And then God loves us. Because we, we, we have to look all these things, all that creation says about God, but then also look, why, how is it that God can love people such as us? Uh, there's a, I found a great video, and this is out of Psalm 8, but there's a great video that just kind of walks through some, some pictures of creation. And so you'll hear Psalm 8 narrated with flashing pictures and video of what the psalm is talking about. Uh, so let's go ahead and play that video and just continue to keep in mind how big and great God is. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. You let your glory be seen in the heavens above. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have established a fortress of strength to still the enemy and quiet the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set into place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of heaven, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. So I feel like that kind of encapsulates all we've talked about so far with the words of Psalm 8, but then the moving pictures in the background. And just to think the space to the sea, to the air, to the land, and just how glorious God's creation is. And that puts us, that puts us a little bit in a, in a situation where we wonder, why, why does God such as that care about us? Why does God such as that love us or pay attention to us? What are, what are we in comparison to the, to the earth or to the world or the universe? Well, God cares a great deal about us. Uh, so the first, the first part is to stop. The second is to listen. Uh, what does He have to say about us? What does He have to say to us? Uh, if, if, if God has your attention now, if God's got my attention now, let's pay attention to what he has to say in the rest of Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is perfect and preserves one's life. The rules set down by the Lord are reliable and impart wisdom to the inexperienced. The Lord's precepts are fair and make one joyful. The Lord's commands are pure and give insight for life. The commands to fear the Lord are right and endure forever. The judgments given by the Lord are trustworthy and absolutely just. They are of greater value than gold, than even a great amount of pure gold. They bring greater delight than honey, than even the sweetest honey from a honeycomb. Yes, your servant finds moral guidance there. Those who obey them receive a rich reward. And so are we listening to what God is saying? If we're listening to what the, the world, what the universe is saying about God, are we listening to what God is saying? I want to tell a story about the importance of listening and reading well. I mentioned that we were, uh, I went to Glacier National Park with my dad a few years ago. Here's a picture of me. Uh, and the, in case you can't read, I'll just, I'll read it out. All wildlife is dangerous. Do not approach or feed. Okay. So in case you needed a, a, a reason not to feed the grizzlies, um, there you have your, your sign right there. However, that, that this, they didn't just leave it at that. 
There's also a sign. Warning, bear frequenting area. So as, as you're hiking along the National, uh, Glacier National Park, you'll see these signs. Warning, bear frequenting area. There is no guarantee of your safety while hiking or camping in bear country. Removal of the sign may result in injury to others and is prohibited by the law. <laughs> it's funny, but it's not funny. <laughs> this is not a sign you take up from a, from a trail and go put in, your, put in your dorm room wall or anything. Yeah, this is a serious business. Like you, you're entering bear country. Uh, not Baylor bears, you're talking about serious bears, dangerous bears. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's, let's get even, even more information. So if, if they don't have your sign yet, if they don't have your attention yet, here's another sign. Entering grizzly country. You are entering a wilderness area and must accept certain inherent dangers, including snow, steep terrain, water, and wildlife. There's no guarantee of your safety. And so this is a little, little perk up speech as you, go, as you would begin your hike going down the trail. Uh, bears have injured and killed visitors and may attack without warning and for no apparent reason. <laughs> to enhance your safety and protect park resources, follow the recommendations posted below. There's hope, okay? Bear spray has proven to be effective for fending off, threatening, and attacking bears, and for preventing injury to the person and the animal involved. And so this is, here's a little advertisement, go buy a thing of bear spray. Um, pepper spray, because every bear deserves a nice spicy meal. <laughs> it goes on to say, if you are attacked, use a firearm only as a last resort. Wounding a bear, even with a large caliber gun, can put you in far greater danger. <laughs> You're going to make the bear angry, <laughs> and he's going to really come after you. And so here's a series of signs that you would, you would read while entering a hiking trail in Glacier National Park. Okay. You would think they would have your attention, right? You'd hope they'd have your attention. And so my dad and I were, were hiking, and we, uh, we, we packed our, our bear spray. Uh, we, we hiked in groups. We did all the things that you're supposed to do. Uh, and we were walking along the trail and we saw this. Uh, that's bear scat. And so clearly there had been a, we were not the only ones on the trail that a grizzly had walked through here recently and deposited evidence of its hiking activities on the trail. <laughs> and so we're, we're walking along and enjoying just this beautiful scenery, but also we understand that a bear could appear out of nowhere and attack us for no apparent reason. And so we're trying to kind of be aware of that also. Uh, so we walked up and we went to Iceberg Lake, which is a beautiful, uh, a beautiful lake with serene views and there's glaciers melting off the mountain. And I got in the water because, you know, that's what boys do. And it was freezing, but it was, it was great. So on the way back, was hiking along. This trail right here, and we were hiking with a group and there was a couple from, from Salt Lake that were walking in front of us. They were geologists and they were walking along and all of a sudden, the woman just, I, I'm just kind of hiking along at a fast pace because I wanted to, to go to a different area of the park. And the woman in front just stops and I plow in to the back of her and her husband. <laughs> and her face had dropped. She was white. And I, I looked up and I saw, and this is about 20 feet away, I saw the hind of a mama, mama grizzly bear about 20 feet away and we're down, we're on the trail. Uh, what a wake-up moment. <laughs> Pay attention to the signs, right? Pay attention to the signs. And I, I first reached for my pepper spray, and then as it became apparent the bear was taking no interest, I snapped this picture. And you really can't see it, but off to the left side of the tree you can see just a little bit of brown. And that was the rump of the, of the mama grizzly bear going down the trail. And so this is the only evidence that I have of me and my close encounter with a grizzly bear. But yeah, um, I actually encountered one. Uh, and and here, here's a, a picture of a grizzly. <laughs> These things are huge. They are absolutely huge. 
Uh, you don't get tangled up with a grizzly bear and win. Uh, you're a ragdoll. Um, the joke, and I know it's, it's, not, it's not supposed to be funny, but the joke that they would tell as a way to maybe diffuse the tension is uh, the way you tell the difference between a grizzly bear and a black bear is uh, if a black bear uh, sees you and you run up a tree, it'll climb the tree and eat you. If a grizzly bear sees you and you climb up a tree, it'll knock the tree down and then eat you. <laughs> and so that's how you tell the difference. But it's, it's kind of funny, but it also illustrates a point that you don't win against nature. That we're, in, we're in, in our city lives, we are sheltered. We're behind our screens, right? We're sheltered from the world around us. We're sheltered from the wildlife, which I think is a great thing because I don't want to encounter grizzly bears on a regular basis or any other wildlife like that, for example. We're alive. I'm alive. My dad's alive because we read well. We listened well. We paid attention to the warning signs. That you, you can read all the signs in the world, but until we pay attention, until we put them in action, it's not going to make a difference. If I was hiking alone, if I did not respect the bears, I probably wouldn't have made it out. I, I mean, may, maybe, I don't know. Uh, if I would have bothered that bear, uh, I, can't, I can't think of a good, a good outcome. So the three things so far, to stop, to listen, and then to join. Let's continue reading in Psalm 19. Verse 12 says, Who can know all his errors? Please do not punish me for sins I'm unaware of. Moreover, keep me from committing flagrant sins. Do not allow such sins to control me. Then I will be blameless and innocent of blatant rebellion. May my words and thoughts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my sheltering rock and redeemer. And I love the fear, that's the fear of God that David has. The understanding that sin brings death. Uh, bears look cute and fuzzy, but you don't play with them. Sin looks cute and fuzzy, but you don't play with sin at all. And so he's praying, keep, away, keep me away from flagrant sins. So I told you a story of how my dad and I, we followed the rules, we had our spray, we were walking in pairs, we did all the things you're supposed to do. Uh, there's a story of someone else who didn't. And this was, the, this was the exact same weekend that we were hiking. Same weekend. It was at Yellowstone, we were at Glacier National Park. The article says this, a bear attack caused the death of a hiker whose body was found on a trail in Yellowstone National Park, officials confirmed Monday. The body of John Wallace, 59, was discovered Friday by two hikers along the Merry Mountain Trail, an area of the park that has been closed to hikers, according to park services. He did not listen to the warnings. Rangers discovered signs of grizzly bear activity, including tracks and scat or bear droppings in a park campground where they believe Wallace pitched a tent on Wednesday, the park said in a news release. And so here you have the story of somebody who thought that the grizzlies were cute. They thought it was okay. They thought that for some reason they're above nature, that the rules don't apply to them, and then they paid the ultimate price. The analogy here is the same applies for us with God's Word. How seriously do we take His Word? How seriously do we take the warnings? I don't think that any of us take it seriously enough. Some people, do, some people commit sins and we just can't fathom why someone would do that. Um, husbands cheating on beautiful, faithful, loyal wives. Um, people getting into drugs. You know what that's going to do to you. You know what happens. Why do we do it still? Why do rational people behave irrationally? I think it's because we don't have the fear of God. Exodus 20.20 20 says the fear of God prevents people from sinning. The fear of God basically being living in awe or reverence. Um, you can use the same analogy here that, that I, I live in a, a fear. My fear of bears enables me to have a healthy relationship with them. I'm on one side of the fence and they're on the other. Right? That's a healthy fear. 
And so I'm hoping that as we look at the, at the world around us, we look at the, the, how, how amazing, how unfathomable the universe is. Let's view God the same way. Let's have a healthy fear of Him. One of the best ways to do that is by carving regular time out for God. What would our lives look like if we all carved out regular time for God? If we viewed God's Word as so essential to us that we took regular time out each day to study it and apply it to our lives and spend good regular time in it. We're so quick to, to turn the TV on or turn the computer on or open up Facebook or, or radio or, or whatever it is. But we need, a, we need a level of desperation. What would our lives look like if we all carved out regular time for God? If we walked in fear of Him and awe and trembling of who He is? If we looked at the fact that a God so immeasurable loves us, what kind of gratitude that we would have? This is very convicting for me, and I think this, this passage is something that's really good for, for me to remember. It's good for all of us. So here's the challenge. Every day this week, every day this week, starting today, going through Saturday, every day this week, stop. Create a hole in the schedule. Okay. Spend nine hours in front of the screen this week. <laughs> it's nine, nine hours a day in, in front of the screen. Take an hour just to stop, create a hole in the schedule. Don't even begin, don't even begin to work until you've spent time with God. Uh, for me, it's, it's kind of a challenge because I, I come here and I work. And I, I love being here, working here. And it's kind of addictive to get into the church, church world and, and think about how I'm going to prepare the next sermon and all these things. But I have to, I have to stop. Even, even though I'm in the Word a lot, I have to stop and take time from a personal nourishment standpoint before I, I can really be effective in preparing or doing church work. I, I wanted myself to have a real desperation to stop in my schedule, create a hole in the schedule when I can meet and be alone with God. And don't allow the busyness of life to get in the way. So stop, then listen. And really, we, really read the Word. Engage in it. Uh, many of us have been Christians for a long time, and it's so easy for us just to become a thing of routine. Uh, Psalm 19 is such a, a famous passage. So many of us know it by heart. But to really read it as if it were new, to be curious, to really continue to look at the words and, and really allow God to have His way with our hearts as we listen and read the Word. So stop, create a hole in our busy lives, or busy schedule. Second, listen, really listen to what the Word has to say. And then to join in uh, and do what it says. Uh, isn't it pretty amazing that, that our lives can join in and proclaim the, the glory of God alongside the all, eter all eternity and the, the vastness of space? That God can do works in our hearts and in our lives that will direct other people to God? And He can use us in miraculous ways to bring healing and love and life to those that are around us, to our families, to our friends, to our community? Let's join in. And so, every day, the challenge is stop. Every day, stop. Create a hole in the schedule. Read the Word. Listen to the Word. And then, join in and do what it says. No matter what God's Word says, have a commitment. Uh, don't be like the hiker who didn't pay attention to the words there. And as, as, as horrible as those results were of someone losing their life because they didn't pay attention to the warning signs, what happens to us if we don't obey God's word is worse. Uh, the consequences are eternal. Uh, separation from God, it's, it's we live without joy, we live following false gods, false idols, when we have God's peace and God's love available to us. And so it's important that no matter what God's word says, we believe it and we do it. No questions asked. There's a, a hymn that was written many years ago how great thou art, how great thou art. What you have is a man who's just walking across the, the road and he hears thunder. He sees a storm rolling in. And just in the thunderstorm, he saw God and saw God's power. 
Uh, you still see this in, in toddlers, in people that are seeing storms for the first time. And they're like, what is that noise? Where does that come from? And they, they feel a sense of fear, which is a good thing to have because you don't want to be out in the rain during a thunderstorm, during a lightning storm. And so we're going to conclude with the great hymn, How, How Great Thou Art. And, and I want to challenge you to, to really sing, consider, meditate, and slow down and, and meditate on these lyrics. So as we sing them, we don't, we don't breeze past them. We really reflect upon what we're saying. Would please stand and sing it with me.